on Private Bradley Manning and we'll play the second part of that interview later on in the week. Hack. You do have a certain responsibility when there's a microphone in front of you. If you're going to use shock tactics about something to get people talking, get them talking about something useful, interesting. I think this is an outrage. Hack. Dementia is what happens when you get really old, right? Well, apparently not. Early onset dementia can happen to people as young as in their 30s. Haxirin Scott meets a woman with a rare genetic form of the disease. She's 32, and in just three years, doctors tell her that she might start noticing the effects of Alzheimer's. I don't sort of sit and think, oh my God, it's coming, it's coming. I just think it would be more frightening to think that I would waste the time that I have worrying about it. Hi, my name's Chantel, and I'm 32. It's more strange knowing that you're probably going to have a condition that you don't have yet and knowing that there's not much you can do about it. Sort of going, oh, it's there, Uh, but it's not there. When Chantelle was about 18, her mother's behaviour started to change. She had a couple of aggressive episodes, one where, you know, somebody had taken her car parking space at the supermarket, so she got out and punched him in the face. Really? Um, Yeah. So behaviours that were really not like her. After a few years, her symptoms got worse and her mum was taken to a nursing home. But even then, no doctors could tell her what was happening to her mother. Eventually, they got a referral to a dementia-specific nursing home and that's where they found their eureka moment. I'm Bill Brooks and I'm a senior research officer at Neuroscience Research Australia working on families with Alzheimer's disease. And he came across my mum and said, wow... Well, I'd actually been studying the family for uh, about 20 years and a colleague of mine, when I got there to meet Chantel, was taking the family history and I actually recognised the name of uh, Chantel's great-grandfather. Chantel had lost touch with that side of the family, so had no idea that researchers like Bill had been studying them since the 60s and had already diagnosed her grandmother and her great-grandfather with early-onset Alzheimer's. And now her mum was in the late stages. My mum passed away, I think it's four years ago now. Um, the process is not nice, though, to, to die of that kind of illness, especially when your body's, you know, parts of your body are still wanting to keep going. Some of the people with early onset disease have it because of a bad gene and it's inherited from one generation to the next. Uh, We know about 20, 22 families in Australia with a genetic form of the disease and there are probably quite a lot more out there that we don't know about. As soon as I knew what mum's condition was, um, I organised to have that genetic testing for myself. Uh, There was a little bit of a wait and then I went in to pick up my results. I went in with my dad and a friend. I mean, it wasn't funny, but it was kind of, we went in, we got the results and I, you know, they sort of gave the result and I said, okay, then, all right, better to know than not know. Then I kind of had to look after my dad and my friend a little bit on the way home because they were a little bit upset. Chantel is 32 and they tell her she might start noticing symptoms in just three years. How will you know when you start to have symptoms? You know, you forget the keys or whatever, all that normal stuff. How do you know when that becomes serious? Do you know, I'll be honest, I'm so hopeful that they'll sort their issue out in terms of research and in terms of going forward and and finding a solution that it's my my priority is helping to find a solution not worrying about something that's that might not happen what is it about it that scares you the most um i guess it's frightening losing yourself feeling like you might be a burden on other people when you think about it realistically those people are your parents like you know it can be my dad and my stepmom and I don't want them when they're at the point in their life where they should be winding down and relaxing to be have having to look after a, a grown woman and to be looking at that and thinking wow that's my daughter and there's nothing I can do to help. Chantelle is 32, prime baby-making time, but there's about a 50-50 chance that they'll have the faulty gene too. So how do you plan for the future when there are so many question marks around what the future might hold? I, I can't answer that one. I honestly, I honestly, that is the one question I cannot answer. I would love to have children um, and, it, and it, it's a huge moral dilemma whether I make a decision to do something that seems quite selfish, like having the good feeling that things are going to be okay Or do I just put it aside and go, no, I'm not going to do that, and then one day they come up with a cure and you spend the rest of your life wishing that you did it? So that's probably the the hardest decision that I could possibly have to make. I always think that uh, it's it's within probably the next five to ten years, but then somebody told me uh, a year or two ago, uh, oh, yes, you said that ten years ago. 
Bill Brooks says there are some really promising drug trials and a cure could be just around the corner. Uh, studies emanating from the United States are starting to do drug trials of disease-modifying treatments in families like Chantel's. And there, I think, we will see for the first time the chance of giving a drug to people before they get symptoms and before they have got uh, significant brain changes. And I think we now have the best chance of getting on top of it that we have for years. It's really exciting. Sort of think, you know, it's a a drug trial. It could work. It might not work. Um, There could be some pretty crazy side effects. If I have to lose a foot to keep my brain, then I'm kind of okay with that. If, If the scientists are at the point where they're getting out there and releasing things to the world, then there's a good chance that they've kind of really thought it through. And if those people are willing to put their entire lives on hold to find a solution for people like me, then that's pretty cool too. So I'm just willing to take in whatever it is that, you know, their knowledge and their expertise and go with it. That's it for tonight. Catch you tomorrow. See ya.